Hey guys, Tim for MVP Machine. As the title implies, today we're going to be comparing cold rolled steel, which you see on the left here, to hot rolled steel for machining purposes. And typically cold rolled costs almost twice as much as the hot rolled. Um, cold rolled steel will come in dimensionally very accurate and very square, where hot rolled steel will come in fairly accurate on dimensions, but not square. Um, and if you're using it for accurate machining processes, you have to square it first. Um, a lot of engineers will spec the wrong material. Um, and it's kind of important that uh, you know this before you start cutting apart because uh, it can cause you a lot of time and aggravation and extra work. So I'm gonna show you a little demonstration on the machine between the two materials and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got the cold rolled set up on the machine. Um, the size of this piece is three and a half inches long by one and a half, I'm sorry, one and a quarter inches tall by one inch deep. And we're going to be putting a half inch wide slot that goes down one inch. So we'll have a quarter inch left um, in the vise to hold it. And uh, it's going to be, it's going to finish above where the vice draws are, so the vice draws won't influence this at all. And I've got the um, dial indicator set up and zeroed right up near the vice on the uh, back side. And I'll show you what it is going across. We're pretty much dead straight. And then up and down, we're also dead straight. So. We're going to put that slot in, and um, I'm not too concerned about making this a precision slot because this is for a demonstration. If we wanted to, I'd be using a, a rougher and a finisher and leaving stock. But uh, let's put this slot in. I'll show you what it does. We'll throw the indicator back in there and see what happens to the outside of the part. Okay, I've got a half inch carbide end mill set up in the spindle and I'm going to just rip right down the middle of this going back and forth ramping down at uh, 50 thousandths per path. We're going to be running about 5600 RPMs and 125 inches a minute. And uh, like I said, this is not a precision slot. <coughs> We're just demonstrating what um, effects it has on the exterior dimensions of the parts and also it'll have an effect on our slot. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to set that dial indicator back up and I'll show you what it, uh, what it did to the outside of the part. Okay, again, I have the dial indicator set up as close to the vise as possible. We'll go across first. And we're nice and straight going across. Now watch what happens going up and down. We've got about a a three thou difference now. So what happened was uh, it basically bird mouthed that slot. Um, so if you're trying to hold any type of precision, and a lot of people buy cold rolled because it comes in the nominal sizes that are nicely finished, so you don't have to debark it like you would hot rolled steel. Um, imagine this piece being a lot larger. Um, if this was uh, three or four inches tall and you were doing a deep slot, you would be off 10, 15, I've seen them off, you know, the, the larger the slot, the deeper you go with cold rolled, the bigger that gets. So, very difficult to work with cold rolled when you're removing a lot of material from it. And uh, now we're going to set up uh, the same size with some hot rolled, and I'll show you what it does. I just wanted to real quickly show you with some calipers. Um, we can get this all in the shot up at the top 
we're checking in about one inch eleven thousandths of an inch then down at the bottom where it was in the vise we're checking at 0.996 and also this slot as it peeled its material out the slot opened up at the top so 0.521 um, so a half plus 21 thousandths and we're a little over because of the way I cut it at the bottom too it's at like uh, 0.505 so if you wanted to do that slot properly and make the slot right you would have to use a smaller tool and leave a lot of stock on the inside the problem with that is even though the inside might be right if the outside's critical you're still going to have that thicker top and thinner bottom that you have to deal with and you could cut that but then how do you set your part up uh, in relationship to the slot so that the slot is level so it causes all kinds of problems um, removing a lot of material from cold gold now let's go to the hot roll and we'll do the same cutter pass okay the hot roll is set up on the machine now um, I've got the indicator touching the back I had to square uh, three sides of this to get it to sit relatively uh, square up and down in the vise and also I don't like running my indicator over the the mill scale it tends to be abrasive so um, we are going to run this across first or get across obviously and now up and we've got about a thou, uh, thou and a half uh, difference between the top and the bottom so good enough for this test um, I am going to run the same uh, program we did in the other one with the same end mill and we'll see what we wind up with. Um, another drawback, well a drawback to hot rolled is that you do have to um, remove the mill scale to square it and to get any sort of precision on the outside where you don't necessarily have to do that with the cold rolled. Um, so this one wound up uh, coming in at about uh, 15 thousandths under that one inch dimension. Uh, of the cold roll, but that shouldn't make much of a difference for this test. So let me set the program up and we'll get going. Okay, here we go on the hot rolled slot. We'll be using the same numbers. You may see a few sparks, but I'm also using air blow. Um, so here we go. Okay, let me get that uh, indicator set back up in there and we'll see how the hot roll did. Okay, I've got the indicator set back up and um, let's check the hot roll. And we're good that way. And now let's go up and down and see if you guys can. Okay, then we changed a little bit. Uh, we just leaned in at about a, a sow and a half. Now it's dead zero up and down. So we're pretty close. Point is the hot rolled material when you're taking large chunks out of it, like the slot, is a much more stable material. Um, the reason being, there's a few of them, but one of them is that the cold finishing process, both uh, steels pretty much start out the same. They're almost identical. Um, and I'm comparing like 10, 18, uh, cold roll to 1020 hot roll. They start out the same, it's just the cold finishing process and the polishing uh, process that makes it dimensionally, um, makes the cold roll steel dimensionally um, more accurate uh, from the start. causes some changes to the molecules of the steel and it's not equal throughout the, the material. It's, a, it's crushed through the rollers cold, um, some areas uh, change more than others, so when you take out a large chunk, it releases those tensions between the molecules, and um, it's kind of a, a toss-up. Uh, with the hot rolled, you have to 
in order to have good dimensional stability outside um, because it, it is a rougher um, dimension when you purchase it. Um, it. A one inch piece of hot roll will come in and have a variance of five to seven thousandths you know, over a piece this size sometimes. So you do have to square it and cut it. Um, and the cold roll, uh, how do you deal with it uh, being off by, you know, seven, five to seven thousandths uh, when you cut it? So you either have to recut the outside, um, where the, which defeats the, the benefits you get um, over hot roll, because if you have to remove the scale on the hot roll and square it, and then go back in and try and fix the cold road afterwards. Um, you've got more work in the cold road, and the hot road steel is sometimes as much as half uh, half off the price of cold road. So, okay, guys, um, some final thoughts on these. Uh, the point I was trying to make with the, the cold road is when you take out large chunks, you can get much more variance. Um, you can drill holes usually all day long as long as you don't change uh, the main structure of the, the part. Um, but uh, the dimensional accuracy that they give you, um, we're going to check the top here. We've got 1 inch 11, so we check at the bottom. You know, that's uh, <clears throat> over 15, 14 thou variance, 15 thou. So, um, the hot rolled, which we're, we've still got our rough side that I didn't machine, but uh, at the top we've got 973, 9.76 at the bottom, actually if I go take a bigger sample, we're 9.76 uh, all over. So. 977 so much more accurate um, the downside is that you do have to square it um, to get your accuracy but the downside of this is once you cut your material out if that outside has to be square to that slot what do you do from there you can cut this because it's basically opened up you can take a fly cutter and cut it but how do you square it to that slot? And that's where the extra work comes in. So moral of the story on this one is if, especially if you're doing large chunks, is leave a lot of extra material. And uh, you, you wanna do <coughs> at least 10, 15 thou on a slot like this on the inside on each wall and come back in and creep up on your numbers. And that slot will be perfect. It just won't be dimensionally correct to the outside. And on your hot rolled, unfortunately, they come in at a nominal number. So if you need one inch of stock, you've got to order a larger, larger thickness because you have to cut that scale off in order to square it up. So thank you guys for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Um, we've got t-shirts and hoodies available now. If you guys are interested, the link will be below in the description.